Hey Sugar Snaps, welcome to the Textile Indie YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Brittany. Here on YouTube, I share tutorials and inspiration in spinning, knitting, wet felting, basketry, and other fiber arts, and I'm really glad you're here. Today's tutorial is on eco printing wool yarn. I'm going to walk through the process of preparing, bundling, and steam bathing my eco print bundles. I pre prepared my yarn going through a soaking, scouring, and mordantine method, and I'll link video tutorials on how to do this in the description below, so check down there for those. Now I'm just going to jump right into the bundling process, a piece of hemmed cheesecloth. I'm going to lay this on my surface first, and then grab one of these bundles of yarn, and I just, I'm going to be laying out dye material and then laying this on top, so I just need to figure out what my layout is going to look like, and it seems like for this one, doing it diagonally so that it fits in the space will work best so that it is entirely covered by the fabric once we wrap it up. So I'm going to lay out a layer of, ma of dye material in this direction in order to have it adhere or attach, touch, touch the wool yarn. I have a collection of garden collected flowers and things that are good for dyeing. I have Black Eyed Susans, eucalyptus, which I've actually scrounged from bouquets, weld that I grew in my garden, some sunflower and sunflower seeds. I've got Dyer's Chamomile, Marigold, Sulfur Cosmos. I got Sulfur Cosmos from Botanical Colors, and then Black Hollyhock that I collected from my neighborhood. I'm going to start laying these out in kind of just a layout that I think would look fun. All of these, except the black hollyhock, are in the yellow ranges, so it's going to be very, very yellowy, very similar colors for the entire bundle. Um, but this is what I have in the studio today, and I wanted to play with it. And yellow is a fun, bright, summery color. So for this gray January day, it seems very fitting. Okay, Dyer's Chamomile first. Then I have less black hollyhock, so I'm going to lay some of these out next. And I'm just trying for the full, I'm not going to break them up at all, just the full petal. And these I collected off the ground. They're just the full flower dried and they've been dropped. And I'm trying to save enough material that I can layer some on top of the yarn once I place it down on the fabric. And if you are interested in a satisfying video on eco dyeing cotton fabric, I have a video in the description below where I shared my process of dyeing some cotton material. It turned out really beautifully, not what I expected, but it turned out nice. So you can check that out in the description below. And you can see for mine, I'm going pretty heavy on the plant material, trying to make it fairly thick. Mm. The eucalyptus smells really good. Okay, this is either going to be a disaster or a beautiful confetti range of yellows on my yarn. Now I'm going to lay out my bundle, kind of organize it. And this is a skein, so I'm laying it out as it naturally would want to lay out and spreading this out so that the layer is rather thin and as much of the yarn as possible can touch the plant material. I forgot to mention that this yarn is still damp. I just pulled it out of the mordant bath. I mordanted it with aluminum sulfate yesterday, allowed it to sit overnight, and now I'm using it for the bundle dyeing. So it's still damp and then we'll soak it once again. So on this side, I'm gonna do the same thing, put some more plant materials on top. I haven't used marigold yet, so I'll throw some of these on. Kind of sprinkle this on in a confetti-like way. And then some black hollyhocks on this side as well. Now I'm going to spray this down with water to make sure that the Plant materials are nice and damp, and just to start to soak everything a bit. If you can, the ideal would be to soak this down, leave it for 15 minutes, come back, soak it down again, leave it for another 15 minutes, so a half hour of resting time in order to dampen the plant materials. 
so that it's a little bit easier to roll it up once they're softened and moisturized. Uh, I'm going to dive right into rolling. So I'm just going to make sure I've sprayed this down really thoroughly. I'm going to put a second square of cheesecloth on top. Sandwich this in place like so. And then I'm even going to fold in these corners so that I can roll it up more effectively. And now I'm going to take my dowel, come to the corner of the fabric and start to roll really tightly, catching any of the flowers that want to sneak out the sides or any of your plant materials. And you can even spray this down as you go since we didn't spray the other side. That's one benefit of using the cheesecloth is that it's still so open. The, the weave is so open it can absorb a lot of water as you work with it. Spray it down, get it wet, tuck in your materials on the sides. And I have these rubber bands to get me started. I'm going to use them to hold the center in place while I use twine to wrap this up. So that will hold that. And I'm going to tie a length of twine to the end of my rod so that I have an anchor point. Tie this really tightly. The tighter you go, the better adherence that I will have because the tension kind of smashes the plant material into the yarn. So I'm going to scoot this in nice and close and start wrapping. Get myself some length to work with here. Start wrapping this tight around all the layers. And I'm doing it really close together. The better you bundle, the more dye results you'll end up with. And when I get to the middle section where that rubber band is, I'm going to take this off, tighten this up all the way across. Make sure I get this end nice and tight. And then go back in the other direction. Really close together. The closer it is, again, the better dye results you'll have. And if the twine is hurting your hand, you can wear a glove, like a garden glove, so that you can pull even tighter on the twine. It can start to cut in your hands if you're not careful, because you actually do want to pull that tight. Okay, I'm going to do a third wrap around, again, changing directions, trying to fill in between rows that I've previously wrapped, shortening the space between wraps. Okay, and then once you've wrapped it as much as you want, more is better, we're going to come in and tie this around the end. So I'll cut the end, loop it around, and send the thread through, and then loop it around, send the thread through. Pull tight on that so that it cinches down, and there is your first bundle. Go ahead and bundle up any other yarn that you want to bundle dye and then I'll show you how to set it up for steaming. Final step before we go to put these in a pot to steam, spray the entire thing down thoroughly. You don't want it dripping wet, but you want it very damp. And now we'll put these in a pot and steam them for two to three hours. I want to show you my setup for my steamer so that you can kind of get an idea of how to do this yourself. Before I do that, I just want to note that you can get creative with this technique and try a few different things to try to get the steam bath going or the heat up in your bundle. You need heat for the fiber to absorb the dye. We're trying to steam it so that we get the moisture, but also heat it so the dye can be absorbed into the yarn. Okay, here's my solution to this. I have this old canning pot. This I only use for dyeing, so if you're going to be using your canning pot, don't use it for canning after this because um, natural dyes are natural, but they may or may not be toxic depending on the type of dye and the mordant that you used. So this is my dye specific canning pot. I have the canning jar separator doohickey flipped over so that it's upside down in the bottom. This creates a little ledge in the bottom of the pot so that I can stick these in at a diagonal. 
These fortunately are short enough dowels that they fit into that space. Um, if you need to, you can shorten your lengths so that they fit into your pot or your space. Okay, so now I'm going to walk you through the steaming process and how to get these heated so that we can get to the reveal. So your first step is going to be finding a pot that works for your bundles and then finding some sort of platform that you can set them on top like the one I just showed you and then fill that the bottom of the pot with two to three inches of water depending on how high you've been able to raise your bundles above that water level and the water should not come above that platform so that you're not sitting your bundles in water you want them to be resting above the water put your bundles in on top and then close it with a lid so that you can maintain the steam and the heat in your pot and then put this on the stove on medium heat and begin to heat it so that you get lots of steam and lots of heat contained inside the pot. You will need to check the water level regularly so set a timer for every 30 minutes or so to re-add water so that you don't boil it all off then you'll end up burning your <laughs> beautiful bundle dyed and then once that has set for about two to three hours, you can kind of decide how long you want to wait. Sometimes impatience is the thing that causes us to stop our creative process. Take the bundles out and allow them to cool. They will be really hot, so wear gloves or use a pot holder or something. Place them on a heat resistant surface to cool and you'll allow those to cool for well, as long as they need to, to be able to cool down so you can touch them or allow it to sit overnight. Sometimes allowing to sit overnight does add a little bit more dye process to your time because you're allowing the fiber to naturally cool and absorb the last remnants of dye that it will absorb. And then we're going to unbundle it from that point. I just pulled these out of the pot and I'm going to open them up to reveal the color. I'm pretty excited to see this. I'm going to save the twine for my next bundle nine project, so I'm trying not to just cut it off. My pot got pretty warm. I was trying to keep the heat in the pot to about 180 degrees. I think it might have gotten over that a little bit, which is fine because if the pot's hot like that, the bundle is probably not getting to that temperature, but we don't want to go above 180 degrees for the wool. Oh, I'm splashing. I'll lay this out here. Roll it out. It's still fairly warm. Ooh, <laughs> the results on the cheesecloth is really pretty. Let's see if we got any benefits on the wool itself. Ooh, I got some nice oranges from the eucalyptus. Very nice. A little bit of muddy green from the Black Eyed Susans. Some hints of purple, blue, green kind of from the hollyhock. Lots of yellow from the weld. Oranges from the sulfur cosmos. So I'm going to lift up my bundle and shake out some of the vegetable matter. Okay, well if these colors stay on here, this turned out really cool and I need to rinse it to get the rest of the vegetable matter out, but a good rinsing should wash that out. So I'm going to shake this one out as well. And this stuff I could actually save, dry it out, and do a dye pot with all the different colors and just kind of get a mixed yellow, maybe some kind of rusty orange color with the hollyhock in there. Very cool colors. I'm going to go rinse these out in the sink and see if the results stay wash fast. I rinsed out the yarn and it is fairly color fast, which is super exciting. So rinse it out till the water came clear. And um, there was still a bit of vegetable matter in the yarn at that point. So I took it outside and gave it a good shake. Sasha's trying to come say hi shook out the yarn really well and tried to get all of the vegetable matter out of the yarn so that as it dries I don't have to pick that out though I think once it dries it'll actually be easier to shake it out so I have it drying up here 
in my shower and it's pretty drippy so I have a towel laid out to catch the drips. Hoping that it's dry by tomorrow, I'm going to start a knitting pattern tutorial for a knit cowl and I'll have a video for that next week.